Tonight on The Late Debate. Boris Johnson says goodbye, but who should replace him in the race for number 10? A new man at the top of the Met Police too. How will Sir Mark Rowley rebuild trust in the force? It's about now working with the Black British community, but also all communities to make people feel safe and try to build a relationship so you can build confidence. And after Samo Farrow reveals he was trafficked to Britain as a child, what does it say about modern day slavery in London? Hello and welcome to The Late Debate. Being a backbencher never seemed a comfortable fit for Boris Johnson, but right now that appears to be the next stop for the MP for Uxbridge and South Ryslip. As he prepares to pack his bags, five of his parliamentary colleagues are engaged in the fight of their lives to replace him at number 10. One week ago, Boris Johnson fired the starting gun for that most unusual of contests, choosing a new prime minister without asking the voters. It is clearly now the will of the Parliamentary Conservative Party that there should be a new leader of that party and therefore a new Prime Minister. One of the first out of the traps was Jeremy Hunt. The South West Surrey MP was runner-up when Boris Johnson was chosen as leader in 2019. I am the experienced Foreign Secretary, more experienced in the Cabinet than any other contender. Uh, and I'm someone with a business background, set up my own business, I can get the economy going. I can but yesterday, into... Mr Hunt was eliminated. My case for leadership is simple. Grant Shapps, the Wellin and Hatfield MP, launched his campaign with a video, but by Tuesday had pulled out of the contest. I would have got to what was the nomination threshold of 10. I was very confident of, of, of being there. Uh, and, of course, the rules were changed last minute to double the nomination threshold, the number of signatures you needed to get, and that was done in order to speed up the process. And I was less sure about um, getting there. At Prime Minister's questions, Sir Keir Starmer was determined to have fun at Boris Johnson's expense. The Prime Minister must be feeling demob happy since he was pushed out of office. Finally, he can throw off the shackles, say what he really thinks, and forget about following the rules. <laughs> The Prime Minister responded with his own brand of humour, suggesting any of the Tories hoping to replace him would easily see off Sir Keir. Any one of them would wipe the floor with Captain Crasheroonie's snooze fest, uh, Mr Speaker. But he also had a defiant parting message. It's perfectly true that I leave not at a time of my choosing, and it's uh, uh, absolutely true. But I am, I am proud of the fantastic teamwork that has been involved in all of those projects, both nationally and, and internationally, uh, Mr Speaker. Uh, and I'm also proud of the leadership that I have given. And I will be leaving, Mr Speaker, I will be leaving soon with my head held high. Barring any big surprises, Boris Johnson will leave number 10 on September the 6th. Thank you all very much. Joining me now are Ellie Reeves, the Labour MP for Lewisham West and Penge, Nikki Aitken, the Conservative MP for the cities of London and Westminster, and for the Liberal Democrats, Brian Paddock, a former candidate for London Mayor. Welcome all of you. Nikki, can I come to you first of all? Uh, who are you backing and why? I am backing Tom Tickenhat for our next leader and our next Prime Minister. I think he's got the character and the policies and the experience that we need to take this country forward. But he started to slip in the, in the polls today. Can you be certain he's going to go through? Our objective for this first week of the campaign was to secure his, uh, his, his right into the TV debates, which will start this weekend. And I think when people see what he is like, what he's got to say, I think that will grow his, uh, his support base. If he is dropped out, who will you back then? I'm not thinking about anybody else apart from Tom at the moment. OK, Ellie... Um who are you backing? Are you, are you, are you, you're not backing <laughs> anyone, obviously. Certainly not. Um, but you must be delighted at the way things have turned out. Well, um, uh, Boris Johnson had to go, didn't he? Uh, it, it's just been one thing after another with Partygate and sleaze. So you know, I'm pleased he's uh, resigned. But you know, we're now in the middle of a leadership contest. Uh, and it, it's really interesting to, to, to watch it. I think you know, there's been uh, 
330 billion pounds worth of unfunded spending commitments from uh, the, the the candidates, um, uh, and many of them sort of talking about um, sort of rebuilding the uh, economy. I mean, Rishi Sunak was the chancellor until last week, so it's a bit rich for him to be talking about rebuilding the economy. Okay. That was his job. Have you lost your trump card with Boris? Well, look, I, I, I think that. Boris had to go, um, but we but will happily. Well, we will happily take on whoever the new leader I I is, and you know, bring it on. So, who, um, who, who do you fear most? I think any of the candidates uh, we can take on. Uh, let's get a new um, uh, a new prime minister in uh, place um, sooner rather than later. We've got a prime minister that lost confidence of his own members of parliament, who is still uh, in place until. Uh, September. That is not good for the country. We've got a cost of living crisis uh, and a Prime Minister doesn't doesn't command confidence. Br Brian, the Lib Dems did well last year on the back of Boris's unpopularity, even before Partygate at, in uh, Chesham and Amersham. Are you worried that now he's gone that your attempts to dismantle the blue wall are going to be a lot harder? No, not at all. Uh, if you look at the front runner, ac according to the bookies, uh, Penny Mordaunt, uh, she at her launch said that she was uh, elected on the same manifesto as Boris Johnson and that's what she's going to implement. So even though they've changed the leader, uh, the problems that the country faces, for example, we're going into a heat emergency, uh, it was only because the Lib Dems proposed COBRA met to deal with the fact that the ambulances can't cope already, let alone with a heat emergency. Um, those are the sorts of problems that are going to continue no matter who the leader of the Conservative Party is. Nikki, uh, Brian talked about Penny Morden. There seems to be momentum there. Do you like her? I've got a lot of time for all the candidates. They're all my colleagues. I've been working with them for the last two and a half years. So let's see what happens next week. It's, you know, it's, it's, uh, we've still got a few votes to go before we have the final two. What do you think Boris Johnson's legacy will be? I, think, I do think history will be kind to Boris eventually because he did get Brexit done. He won um, a tremendous election victory in 2019, uh, winning the Red Wall and also winning seats like mine. And also he did get us through COVID. He did, he did uh, lead the, 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 the vaccine programme and he did lead the free world in fighting for Ukraine. So I, 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 there's been obviously bumpy rides along the way and I certainly do not uh, defend uh, the issues that were going on about parties in number 10 during COVID. But let's be fair, and let's ex uh, let's let's. Are, are parties his legacy? I think parties are his legacy. Whilst the country were sticking by the rules that he introduced, whilst they were making huge sacrifices, you know, I've been contacted by constituents who uh, didn't have their partners with them whilst they were in Labour, people that couldn't say goodbye to dying loved ones, grandparents that couldn't see I'm grandchildren. Not that at all. I'm and not all, but that whilst at all. that's going on, Boris Johnson to... was having parties, and I think and he I'm, will be remembered for, yeah. for that. Well, absolutely. Look, I'm not denying it. I'm not. But let's look at the bigger picture as well. Let's look at Ukraine. Let's look at COVID, and let's look at Brexit. He got Brexit done. I, I was a Remainer. I am now fully behind us making the most of Brexit. But, but we're but still Nick... debating the Northern Ireland Protocol. So, you know, it, there, there's still a let's lot see what a new, to be sorted let, out. Let's see what happens with the new Prime Minister. Nikki, I think thousands of families who lost loved ones during the Covid pandemic will take issue with you saying that Boris Johnson's got us through Covid mm. because many people did not get through Covid. I lost, and I many, lost loved ones myself, uh, believe me, and I didn't see my father for at least six months and then he died of dementia and I never got to say goodbye to him properly so please do not di please do not dictate that to me because I I, I know exactly what happened you just said when it that came Boris to COVID, Johnson got us he through got Covid us, he, got us he did through not with get the us all through program. Covid he got us through with the furlough program so you know look I, I said I'm not defending the parties whatsoever I was disgusted and that's why I resigned being, being a vice but chairman about, in February I was very sad. What about the, PP, the PPE that, that, that had to be yep, got rid of, rid, rid, rid of? What about contracts to, 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 to make but, Ellie, do you recognise if you rewind a bit a bit more do you recognise that he did achieve stuff when he was mayor of London? Um, well, there's a legacy there. He's doing better than the current mayor of London. Well, I mean, I disagree with with, with, with that. Strikes. actually. Um, and you look at uh, crime levels uh, yeah, down now. In, in, now. In, in in London. Uh, knife crime uh, down. Uh, burglaries Housing uh, down. Um, targets missed. Uh, 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 Strike I do days think well, TFL in a complete mess. <laughs> Should we carry on? The TFL. 
yeah. need support from the government, which we've been asking for. And it's for. got a £6 billion. Pounds. It's got another two-week extension from yeah. funding. Can I just bring Brian in here? Brian, you, 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 can no, I, no, sorry. No, no, sorry. Long, because that's not because long Sadiq term. will not take on the unions. Full stop. Okay, if you, if you okay, look at Brian, funding in Brian. other parts of the world, other, other Ellie, Ellie, infrastructure Brian gets a lot stood more. against Boris twice when, uh, as candidate for mayor. Do you recognise in him that there was, he was a good campaigner? Do you recognise any strengths to the man? Well, I remember in the second campaign when I was up against him, he said very little at all. He did have a capable team behind him. But when you look at his legacy, there's a helter-skelter at the Olympic Park, which cost uh, hundreds of thousands of pounds. Uh, you've got the Boris buses, which uh, my, my friend uh, Caroline Pigeon calls cauldrons on wheels. And, and in this weather, when you go on a Boris bus, that's exactly what they're like. And he wasted millions on a garden bridge across the Thames that was never built. That's his legacy as Mayor of London. Nicky, you disagree with these two well, I'm, on looking, a lot. I'm looking at the current situation, but and London is, you know, is is not being served by the current mayor. Okay, um, let's let's pause on this for a moment because not only will we have, will we have a new prime minister by the autumn, but Londoners will have a new police chief. So Mark Rowley is to be the new commissioner of the Met, the country's most troubled police force. The Met is in special measures; it's been dogged by scandal. So I'm sure Sir Mark would be the first to agree he has a huge challenge to restore the trust of Londoners. This is where I grew up here. Uh, five years of my life before I moved down further on the estate. Sace has lived on Southwark's Ellsbury estate all his life. Like many young Londoners, he's had a difficult, sometimes hostile relationship with the Met. I've been stopped and searched over 30 times since the age of 14. Every time it was the same excuse. High crime area, you look suspicious, you fit the description. They're searching my car for drugs, even though I told them what I do. After this stop and search two years ago, Sace decided to approach the Met with an offer. He now trains police officers on stop and search tactics. He's also a mentor for young people. He doesn't underestimate the challenge the new commissioner faces to rebuild trust. The police can't police their way out of this issue. This is uh, linked to deprivation, linked to austerity, lack of opportunity, unemployment. But it's about now working with the Black British community, but also all communities to make people feel safe and try to build a relationship so you can build confidence. Sir Mark Rowley retired from the Met in 2018. When he returns in the summer, he takes over a force in crisis. The mayor is banking on him being a reformer, but how far should those reforms go? Is the Met too big and should it be broken up, with responsibility for some policing like counter-terrorism and VIP protection handed to the National Crime Agency? That would mean the commissioner in London would have to focus just on policing London without all those extra worries and pressures. And that means hopefully they would get the basics right, which clearly the special measures report shows the police are not doing in London. Others argue the Met's basic command structure is fractured following a decision to amalgamate London boroughs. Instead of a commander for every one of the 32 boroughs, there are now just 12 commanders overseeing two or three boroughs each. There was a far more unified um, looking at the communities that were within that borough and I think the trust and confidence has started to uh, wane since then because at far more grassroots level they haven't got the grip that they need. The structure of the Met might be in need of change but SACE believes it's far more important to change the mindset of the capital's police force. And still with me is this week's panel, Labour's Ellie Reeves, Conservative Nikki Aiken and Liberal Democrat Lord Paddock. Brian, you as well as being a former mayoral candidate or a former Deputy Assistant Commissioner of the Met, what is Sir Mark Rowley's priority? I think there needs to be a change in culture. It's been done before. Um, th there was a, a, a big report uh, called the PLUS report which changed the Metropolitan Police Force into a Metropolitan Police Service to make it more outward looking, to be more open, uh, to, be, to be more accepting of criticism. The Met's gone into reverse since those days. So Mark can take, there is a template there. How do you that change Mark, the culture of an organisation with 30,000 plus people? Well, the other interesting thing that was talked about here is about structural change. One is the Met is too big for one person uh, when it's got national responsibilities. The division of, of accountability between 
Home Secretary for National Responsibilities, Mayor of London for uh, London Responsibilities, makes it confusing in, in terms of accountability. And the fact I could only just about lead one borough, Lambeth, as a commander and do it effectively. To, to have two or three boroughs uh, li liaising with chief executives uh, of councils under different uh, uh, political flags is almost impossible to do. So there needs to be structural change and there, ne uh, and, and well, there needs to be a What about breaking it up change. even further, like north and south of the river, two separate forces? No, I think, I think London as a whole under uh, the Mayor of London as uh, the, the effectively the Police and Crime Commissioner is the right way to go. But the, but the Mayor needs to be responsible for policing London and therefore the national responsibilities should go to the National Crime Agency. Ellie, the Mayor has been the Police and Crime Commissioner for six years. The Met, the Met is in a mess. Did he take his eye off the ball? I think the Mayor is in a mess, but actually a lot of this uh, comes from the Home Secretary. Police numbers fell below 30,000 in uh, London. We clearly haven't got proper vetting procedures uh, in place for police officers. Um, and there is this culture that needs uh, changing. Whistleblowing procedures, for example, so that uh, officers can call out wrongdoing. You know, confidence in policing is uh, in London is, uh, I think, at an all-time low and you know I grew up in in London I remember uh, Stephen Lawrence uh, being murdered when I was a teenager in southeast uh, London so I remember some pretty dark times for the mayor and I think we are at that that that, that sort of level of lack of confidence in the in the mayor you know, Sarah Everard murdered by uh, a serving police officer, uh, officers filming the dead bodies of Nicole Smallman and Bieber Henry, women having absolutely no confidence in the, in the Met. One thing that has really change. emerged in, in the last 12 months or so is just how much misogyny there has been in the Met in certain parts of it. And the Sarah Everard case has highlighted fears that women have. Do you recognise those? Yes, of course. I think you, you can't you can't uh, deny any of that. And I agree with everything that Brian has just said about restructuring the Met. It is too large for one crime and uh, uh, police and crime commissioner, the mayor, and also the um, the commissioner. I think that we need to be looking also about central London policing. I would of course say that, but that's where the the huge amount of crime is. But then the outer London feel that they they have no police officers at all. So we've got. A, Mark's got a big job to do, but I, I'm confident that he can. Is Ellie do right it. that uh, Pretty Patel cut the number of police too far? Uh, look, I think we, I think we all agree that there probably were too many cuts, and that's why Boris Johnson um, has been uh, one of his big one of his big uh, policy areas was to increase the number of police, and we're I mean, I think thirteen thousand up now. Um, but look, this, the, the Met is in a mess. It's going to take a lot of a long long time to get it uh, um, get, get it up and running again. But I do think Mark is. Mark is the right person, but he's going to have to make some really big, bold reforms. Let, let's, let's be clear, the increase in the number of police officers Boris Johnson brought in was simply to replace the number of police officers that were lost since 2010. And there is no attempt to replace police community support yeah. officers, yeah, no, for example, right. who were a visible presence on oh, the yep. street, a reassuring presence that turned... That, that was Ken Livingston's old idea of uh, it a PCA so for every, look, uh, every ward. policing is really yeah. important, it, it, and, and it all, all, all our areas. But I do also agree with Brian that you know we've gone, down, gone to this by borough, I'm in a tri-borough, Commission um, uh, 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 command command uh, commander. Structure. It doesn't yeah. work. It doesn't work. We've got to go back to uh, neighbourhood policing under one borough. But that's commander. been lost under this government. The the and under the, this the, mayor. The, this the, 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 the police hubs have all gone. People don't under see police mayor. on the it was on the street. The, it was, I'm sorry, it but was the, Sophie the, Linden, whose idea it was, because I had lots of meetings the, with her. Believe the, me, the, and the, I kept the, telling her it the was police wrong. Police cuts has come from central government. It's been a decision by the prime minister and the home secretary. Uh, at the way that uh, we don't see police on the streets, that people don't have confidence in the, the mayor, and I'm just, to, to blame the mayor for all of that. It's I think it's just wrong. Money, to, believe me, I've run. I've run. I've run. I've run a council and I've seen I've seen cuts and you make efficiencies and you and you restructure that's what you do well, yeah and that's, what, and, bar and, that's what, and that's what the Met did the gov central government the Tory government cut police resources in London forcing the Metropolitan Police Commissioner an operational decision nothing to do with the mayor to yeah. merge boroughs together and only have one uh, one commander that is the result of worked. Tory police cuts. Brian, right. last right. time you were on this programme, you didn't want to criticise the previous commissioner, Cresta de Dick, because she's a friend of yours. Um, do you now accept that she got it wrong? 
Yeah, I do. Um, I think she was very popular within uh, her, within the Metropolitan Police. She was always very supportive of her officers. I'm not sure she was willing to tell uh, difficult truths to her own officers about the need to change. And is Sir Mark the right man? He sounds uh, like uh, a very decent chap. He is saying the right things, but you don't get the job. Uh, you don't convince the Mayor of London without saying the right things. Let's see what he actually does. Can I turn finally to the, the story about Sir Mo Farah this week? Um, extraordinary story and seemingly highlighting a problem of modern day slavery in London. I mean, how amazed were you when you heard? It's an incredible story. And I, I watched the documentary yesterday um, and it was incredibly moving um, and actually very upsetting to, to watch and to hear about what uh, Sir Mo had been through. Um, and just the difficulties that to, 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 to overcome uh, and the reality is as I suspect that he is not alone in those uh, experiences. Do you worry Nikki that even in, in a constituency like yours with some very affluent properties that there is this below the radar modern day slavery going on that nobody knows about? There's modern slavery in every borough in London I have no doubt and that's why we brought in the Modern Slavery Act uh, several years ago under Theresa May um, and she was Home Secretary and you know we've got to do more it's it's the hidden crime and you know we could be living next door to um, to, to a family with, with with a with a modern day slave so we've all got to keep vigilant and we've all got always got to re report if it doesn't feel right it probably isn't right report it. Baroness Theresa May did bring in the Modern Slavery Act but the government has rowed back from the Modern Slavery Act with the Nationality and Borders Bill yeah. making it more difficult for people to prove that they are victims of modern slavery. My concern is would Mo Farah uh, have no action taken against him uh, by the Home Office if he hadn't won three gold medals? Is Sir Mo Farah's case a reason for your government to think twice about the Rwanda policy? The Rwanda policy is about stopping the uh, boats and the, uh, the traffickers. It's trying to stop modern day slavery. But are you taking so too harsh a line on people who are asylum seekers and, and there, refugees? There are ways to get here through legal means. But, but you've and taken those away. In the Nationality and Borders Bill, Labour proposed uh, the, the Dubs Amendment, which would uh, have given safe passage to unaccompanied minors uh, coming here to be reunited with their uh, families under family reunion. And the Conservatives uh, refused to back that amendment. You've taken away safe routes of passage and you've failed to clamp down on the people smugglers. That's why people are coming across in these boats. And frankly, the Rwanda deportations isn't going to solve that problem. Until we until we have it in practice, we can't say at the moment it's a theory. We need to see it working in practice. Well, it's only a, only a, only a theory because we, the flight got... Hopefully, if we can then see the French working better with us and uh, and and the, the rest of Europe, we've got to stop people coming here in the fir it, it, to Europe in the first place. Once they get in, o over over into France, it's it's game over. We've got to be able to do more. That's one of the reasons why I want to see the international development fund replaced and and grown again because I think we need to help people. Okay, in their Nikki, own I'm going to have to stop you both there. I'm afraid we, I'm afraid we've run out of time as usual. Thank you to all my guests this evening, Ellie, Nikki, and Brian. I'll be back with the late debate in September when we'll be getting used to a new tenant in number ten. Thank you and good night.